Good morning. It's Friday, June 17th, and we are all aware of the events that took place on January 6, 2020. And the particular event that I want to talk about is the attacks on Mike Pence, the vice president. Now, the leader of that attack was the president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. But Donald J. Trump had an associate, a lawyer working with him, John Eastman. Now, John Eastman is a very, very conservative lawyer. And he instilled in the president the facts that, the false facts, that Mike Pence could be convinced to stop the counting of the electoral votes by declaring that there was fraud. Now, we all know that Mike Pence stood his ground and ignored the chanting crowds in the Capitol that was saying, hang Pence, hang Pence. And Donald Trump was saying, that's a good idea. But Eastman, who we must view as the architect of this pressure campaign, kept on insisting that Pence had legal authority to stand in the way of the certification of the election results. Now, we know that Pence ultimately rejected that and did the correct thing. Much to the distress of Trump and his supporters. And another thing about Eastman, he served as a clerk to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. And this gets me to the second part of this rant. It turns out that Ginny Thomas the ultra-conservative wife of the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who was also an ultra-conservative, had been communicating via email with John Eastman on January 6th. Isn't that quite a coincidence? It's been established that Ginny Thomas was in regular contact with the Trump's chief of staff at that time, Mark Meadows, between Election Day and January 6th, encouraging him to keep up the effort to overturn the election results. So we're wondering, what exactly are the emails between Ginny Thomas and John Eastman saying? We don't know that. Right now, those emails are in the hands of the J6 committee, and they are stum, and they're not saying anything about what's in these emails. They don't even know if they're going to use these emails as any part of their investigative results, so to speak. Now, Ginny, who is really a very active ultra-conservative and belongs to many high-level ultra-conservative causes and has some positions in those organizations that are at the highest level, has repeatedly said that her political activism has nothing to do with her, jo her husband's job on the Supreme Court. Well, I don't know. It's difficult. I think it's very difficult to separate a person like Ginny Thomas from her husband who is also equally con ultra-conservative. I don't know if one can believe that she has little or no effect on the way her husband views his job and his position. There are many cases that are very tenuous, and they come down to a vote here or there, and I would hate to think that Ginny Thomas has any influence over her husband's decision-making. In fact, I know in one case, Thomas was his dissenter. It was an eight-to-one decision, and he was dissenting. And it had to do with a mail-in ballot voting procedures. And it wasn't that the procedures were wrong. He was demonstrating that the support for the claim of election fraud was a threat to America. But there was no election fraud in this particular case. So here we have a Supreme Court justice who was, believes tenuously that there could have been election fraud somehow. And we all know that's a big law. So when I look at this family situation, Ginny Thomas on the outside, Clarence Thomas on the inside, 
and the shape of this country and the fact that the J6 committee is going to eventually close its doors and turn all this information over to the Justice Department. And we'll see what the Justice Department does, because it's their decision as to whether or not charges are brought up to many people who actively contributed to the insurrection. We know that there are 600 some odd cases pending or maybe 800. The numbers are astronomical considering the shape of this country. So why? Why in this situation is Clarence Thomas clinging to his job when in reality he should be recusing himself if there's any case that comes up that involves the insurrection given the fact that his wife was an active insurrectionist. Don't you think that for the sake of the country and for the sake of the law that Thomas should recuse himself at the very least, if not finally throw in the towel and resign? You can't be in that high a position and have somebody in your family close to you, very close to you, working against the democracy in this country. And yes, ultra-conservatives are okay, but not in this situation. This is not a situation that you should be in as a Supreme Court justice. Your slate has to be squeaky clean. And she is out of control because she doesn't recognize the fact that she has put her husband in this tenuous position. She is marching on because her belief in her conservative ways is above everything else. And that's the trouble. The people on the far right are very dedicated to their cause. And that is a simple explanation. It's a form of insanity is more like it. So I'll leave you with those thoughts this morning. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.